Well, it's nice to have a day off from work for a change, not have to go to work. Uh, I want to bring the message of salvation unto you, that is the way we can be in heaven. And of course, it's through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way to come. I want to be reading in Luke chapter 15, Then drew near unto him, that's unto the Lord Jesus Christ, all the publicans, that's tax collectors and sinners, for to hear him and the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. I'm glad that he receiveth sinners because he's received me. When I was 17, back when I was 17 years old, the Lord Jesus Christ saved my soul. So now I know I'm on my way to heaven. There's through nothing that I can do. We can't, can't make it to heaven on our own. We've got to come through the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be in heaven. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the Lord Jesus Christ receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth uh, together his friends and neighbours, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Now we all need to come by faith. We all need to come in repentance toward God. That's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then we've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. But the point is this. Many people think they're good enough for God. In other words, they won't come in repentance. Acknowledging their sinful condition before the Lord. And this is, we're all in that same boat. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we've got to understand our need. It's like the Lord Jesus Christ said, he said, they that are whole need not a physician. In other words, those that are not sick, they don't need a doctor, but they that are sick. We've got to realize we have a sickness called sin. It's a lot worse than even corona, cancer, whatever you'd like to say. You and I have to realize that that disease, that thing is taking us down to hell. And God does not want us to be in hell. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth who comes to God and acknowledges their sinful condition before him more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Of course there's repentance and faith. We've got to acknowledge our sinful condition before the Lord, admit it before God, that's repentance, it's the change of mind, then it's faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do that today, your soul will be saved. It would be the best day of your entire life if you would come to know Jesus Christ as your Saviour, so that he won't be your judge. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbours together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. In other words, he wanted the inheritance before the time, before his dad had actually died. And that's pretty cheeky, in my opinion, to ask that of his father. But anyway, he did that. And not many days after the youngest son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living, you know, parties and whatever. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. 
But he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to sweet, uh, feed swine, in other words, feed pigs. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. So he couldn't even eat the pig's food. It wasn't allowed. It wasn't given to him. He wasn't allowed to eat it. So he must be very hungry. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. And this to me is his repentance. He's come to himself. He's realizing, hey, I've done something wrong here. I've, I've asked for this inheritance from my dad, and I shouldn't have. It was too early. He hadn't died yet. So he'd been very covetous, greedy, and he wanted this money, and now he's blown it all. He's blown the, um, the money that his dad gave him, and he's there feeding uh, pigs. And then he realizes, hey, I've done, done this wrong. I shouldn't have done this. And so this is his repentance. So he came to himself, and... Um, and he said, and when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger, as we said. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Now this actually is a story about a Christian who, is, who has backslidden, because you notice that he says it's his father. And you and I need to understand God is not our Father. You might uh, think and you might have heard, oh, we're all God's children. You know, God is our Father. It's wrong. We've got to be born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to become children of God. The Bible says we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So you've got to put your faith in Christ to become a child of God. Otherwise, you'll never, ever be in heaven. And this is the point. This is what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is God wants us all to be in heaven. Make no mistake about that. But we are heading down to hell by default. So the point is this. We cannot get to heaven by our own good works. It's not by righteousness, uh, not by our own righteousness, but, but by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is perfect. He's absolutely sinless. He knew no sin, did no sin, and in him is no sin. Praise the Lord for the perfection of the divine substitute that took the sinner's place upon the cross of Calvary. So he said, uh, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, uh, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Now, if you're a believer and you've backslidden, you know, you've gone away from God, don't think, the, don't ever think, you can lose your salvation. That salvation is absolutely eternal. This is a matter of relationship between our Father and ourselves. And so it's just a matter of getting in the right, back in the right relationship with our Father, with our Heavenly Father. If that's you, if you're a believer, maybe you've gone astray a bit, it, you know, what you need to do is acknowledge that you've done the wrong before the Lord and uh, seek Him by prayer and come back unto him. As I said, you can never ever lose your salvation if you're saved. If you've trusted Christ, if you've received Christ, you can never lose that salvation because it's eternal redemption that he has got for us by his own precious blood when he shed it upon the cross. But I'm using this story as a, uh, an illustration of those who are not saved. As I said, we're not God's children. He's not our father until we've trusted Christ until we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So this, this boy, this man, he young man, he realized his sinfulness. I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. He was actually prepared to take a lower place. Now he's, he's still a son, and this is the point. This is what I'm trying to say. We cannot lose that eternal salvation if we are saved, if we're children of God. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. Here's his recognition of sin. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. 
But the father said unto uh, to the servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither or bring here the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. You might say, well, you're not dead. Well, actually, if you're not saved, you are spiritually dead in the sight of the Lord. You need to be made alive in Christ. You need to have the new birth. You need to have the, the life of God in you through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you say that uh, you're not lost. Well, we are lost. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. So we've got to realize that we're lost. We're hell-deserving sinners. We're heading down to the judgment of God because of our sins. But God, in his love, sent the Lord Jesus Christ to come to die upon the cross. I'm sure you've heard this verse. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him, that is on Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You see, we don't have to do anything to be condemned. We're already condemned because of our sinful behavior and wickedness before the Lord. We're actually the enemies of God, believe it or not, when we're born into this world. We need to be made the friends of God. The only way we can be made the friends of God is through the once-for-all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross and our right response to that. See, it says in the Word of God, He hath made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, or when you do, you'll receive the righteousness of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we're dead in our trespasses and in our sins without Christ. God wants to make you alive in Christ. Wants to make you one of his children so that we can be saints and not sinners. You see, yes, we're all sinful, that is true, and we're born as sinners. But God wants to make you into a saint, someone who has the holiness of God, the righteousness of God. And that's an amazing thing, amazing transaction that can take place in your life if you come to Christ today. Now, his eldest son was in the field, and uh, as he came and drew nigh or near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou uh, never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. In other words, you didn't throw a party for me. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet, or it was fit, that we should make merry and be glad. For this my, uh, thy brother was dead and is alive again, he, uh, and was lost and is found. I wonder, have you been found by the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who came to seek and to save that which was lost? Moving on now to uh, Luke chapter 16. And he said, that's the Lord Jesus said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg, I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do. 
that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his lord's debtors unto him, and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and write fourscore. In other words, write eighty. And the Lord commended the unjust steward, because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. In other words, wiser than the believers. And I say unto you, Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of un unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore uh, ye have not been faithful in the, in the unrighteous mammon, in other words with normal uh, money or riches, who will commit to your trust the true riches, that is the heavenly riches? And if ye have uh, not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon, that is, riches or, or money. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts. Take note of that. God knoweth your hearts. He knows every one of our hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John... Since that time the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. It is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery, and whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. There was a certain rich man uh, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. So there are two extremes here. A very rich man clothed in very posh clothes, you know, nice, pretty clothes or whatever. But this other man, he was a beggar. His name was Lazarus. He was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. In other words, we would call it heaven, just to make it simple. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell... He lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented, or tortured, in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus, evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, there, uh, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. And he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, in other words, I've got five brothers, that they may, he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Is this rich man, is in hell, in the torments of hell, that's suffering and burning and torment, and he doesn't want his brothers to go there. And this is my concern. I mean, I realize I'm not in hell, but 
you're here on earth, and I want to warn you to not go to hell. Because this is where we're going by default, my friend. It's a hard pill to swallow, but it's the absolute truth. We need to understand the great danger we're in, otherwise we'll never come to Christ for salvation. You see, we can be in heaven if we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But if we don't, we'll finish up like this rich man in hell, writhing around in pain, asking, you know, asking for a drop of water for his tongue, and it wasn't granted unto him. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. In other words, they have the Bible. They have the Word of God. And this is what we do as gospel preachers. We come out here to let you know that there is salvation alone found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The Lord Jesus Christ will either be your saviour or it'll have to be your judge. So he says here, they have Moses and the prophets, they have the Bible, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. In other words, they'll change their mind. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And the most important person in the whole of the universe of God has risen from the dead, and I wonder, have you believed? You know, that's, it, it's not true. You know, if someone comes from the dead, they will believe. That, that is not true. You've got to realize that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. He's the only one who said, I am the way, not a way, the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. One of you come in repentance toward God, as I said, that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your soul will be saved. In whom we have redemption, through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Yes, his precious blood had to be shed that day. Remember, they came and they break the legs of the first that was crucified with him, and then the other one. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, one of the soldiers took a spear and thrust it into his side, and forthwith there came out blood and water. That blood still has the power to wash your sins away, my friend. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. In other words, no forgiveness. And I'm here to tell you today that there's only one way to heaven, that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Man-made religion will take you down to hell. Like we just read here, there are hundreds of millions of people in hell right now, as we speak, under our feet, calling out in pain, crying in pain, because they have left this earth without the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you prepared to leave this earth without the Lord Jesus Christ and find yourself in hell? God does not want that for you. And that's why I come out here to bring you the message of eternal salvation through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. What will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Will he be your saviour, or will he have to be your judge? Remember, Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and he was buried. And praise God, the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. He's the one that desires your eternal blessing. He desires to give you everlasting life. And this life is found alone in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's forever and eternally too late. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening and have a great day.